Hello students, in this lecture, we are going to discuss operation of an alternator with an infinite bus bar. We know that the voltage and frequency of an infinite bus bar remains constant irrespective of the real or reactive power supplied to it or drawn from it. The FP characteristic of an infinite bus bar is shown in figure where F is frequency and P is active power. We can observe that whether the active power supplied by the infinite bus bar is P1 or P2, the frequency F1 remains constant at its no load value. Even if the active power is being consumed by the infinite bus bar, the frequency will remain constant at its no load value that is F1. Similarly, the VQ characteristic of an infinite bus bar is shown in figure where V is terminal voltage and Q is reactive power. Here also, we can observe that whether the reactive power supplied by the infinite bus bar is Q1, Q2 or any other value, the terminal voltage remains fixed as V1 where V1 is terminal voltage at no load. Even if reactive power is being consumed by the infinite bus bar, the terminal voltage remains fixed. In previous lectures, we have discussed these characteristics for an alternator that is FP characteristic of an alternator was like this where this is F and this is P for an alternator if you remember. Similarly, VQ characteristic of an alternator was like this where this is V and this is Q. This was discussed in detail in previous lecture. Now we are going to study the effect of change in mechanical input of the alternator. Mechanical input means if we are considering a steam turbine then mechanical input can be changed by increasing a steam input that is by increasing governor set point. This figure so shows an alternator connected to the infinite bus bar. A nearby load is also shown. So we are going to discuss the operation of this alternator when it is connected to the infinite bus bar. The moment when this alternator is synchronized, the active power supplied by this alternator is very small and the reactive power supplied by this alternator is either very little or not at all. We are going to discuss this effect in detail. If we will plot the FP characteristic of this system, a system of this alternator connected to the infinite bus bar side by side, then we can observe that for infinite bus, the frequency will remain constant. So this characteristic will be like this for infinite bus bar. We are going to plot FP characteristic of the system that is infinite bus bar containing this alternator connected to it. So for the alternator, we know that the characteristic will be like this. And the moment when alternator was synchronized, if you remember, the frequency of this alternator that is incoming machine was kept slightly higher than the infinite bus bar frequency. So that the moment when alternator was connected that is synchronized, the point of operation was like this. Where PG is very small power, active power supplied by the alternator to the infinite bus bar the moment it was synchronized because its no load frequency was kept slightly higher than the system frequency that is infinite bus bar frequency. That's why at the time of synchronization, we kept no load frequency slightly higher than the system frequency. So question comes, what if we will keep the no load frequency of this alternator instead of keeping slightly higher than FS, if we will put it, keep it slightly lesser than FS, then what will happen? For this scenario, for this case, the situation will be like this. That is, when we have kept the no load frequency of an alternator to be synchronized to the system slightly lesser than the system frequency, that is infinite bus bar frequency. So in this situation, the point of operation will be this one, as we can't change the frequency of infinite bus bar. It will be same at its previous value. So for this point of operation, the active power supplied by the alternator will be negative. That is, it will start consuming active power from the infinite bus bar and it will behave like a motor. So instead of supplying, it will start consuming power from the infinite bus bar operating as a motor. That's why we always keep the frequency of incoming machine slightly higher than the infinite bus bar frequency. Hope it is clear to all of you. Now, as soon as alternator is connected to the infinite bus bar, that is once it is synchronized, it will start floating. Floating means neither it will supply active power nor consume active power. However, keep this mind that it will supply very small active power, shown like this, very small. 
so which can be ignored. Now we are going to increase the mechanical input to the alternator by increasing governor set point. Then its no load frequency will shift up from F01 to say F02. That is, once the mechanical input to the alternator will be increased, that is, once the governor set point will be increased, this curve will shift up. Fine. So that the no load frequency of the alternator will shift up. As we know that the infinite bus bar frequency can't be changed. So it will be fixed at its normal value that is fs. So keeping this in mind, we can observe that the point of operation will shift from this point to this point. So that the system will frequency will remain fs and the active power supplied by the alternator will increase from really a small value, negligible value, which was at the time of synchron or just after synchronization. Now it will increase from PZ1 to PZ2. So earlier, the moment when this alternator was synchronized, the total demand, load demand, was fulfilled by the infinite bus bar and very a small power contribution from the alternator. So let us treat the demand of this load, active power demand of this load as P load. So we may write P load this P load as this a small active power, this a small active power contribution from the alternator just after synchronization, this PG1 and remaining power from the infinite bus bar. Remaining power, this one is PIBB1. Now, once the mechanical input to the alternator is increased by increasing its active power contribution from PG1 to PG2, this load, this load will be supplied by alternator with contribution PZ2 and active power contribution from the infinite bus bar as P IBB2 so that PZ2 plus IBB2 will be equal to P load. Fine. Now, if we will increase the governor set point further, then this curve will shift up further, increasing its no load frequency from F02 to F03. So, in this case, the point of operation will shift from this point to this point. Increasing the active power supplied by the alternator from PG2 to PG3. So in this case, this load, nearby load, active power demand by this load will be supplied by the alternator as well as infinite bus bar so that this power PG3 plus PI BB3 will be equal to P load. So we can conclude that by increasing mechanical input to the alternator, that is by increasing the governor set point, the no load frequency of the alternator will shift up supplying more and more active power to the load, nearby load or to the infinite bus bar. Fine. So the question comes, what if the active power supplied by this alternator is even more, let us say PG3 is even more than this load, then what will happen? The excess power supplied by this alternator will flow back into the infinite bus bar. As we know that the infinite bus bar may consume or supply any amount of power without a change in frequency as well as voltage. Fine. Now, we know that this active power PG is nothing but excitation EMF into terminal voltage upon synchronous reactance times sine delta, where delta is load angle. So here in this case, for this system of alternator connected to infinite bus bar, we know that terminal voltage remains constant and this XS is also constant, synchronous reactance. So we may write this PG is proportional to E sine sine delta. So we are discussing the case when mechanical input to the alternator is varied, keeping the excitation EMF constant. That is, we are not changing the field excitation, just we are varying the mechanical input to the alternator. That is, we are just varying the governor set point for a steam turbine. So keeping these two conditions, if we will analyze the three conditions three scenarios of PG1, PG2 and PG3, where PG1 is negligible, very a small power supplied by the alternator just after synchronization. And PG2 is the power when governor set point is increased after synchronization. Once governor set point is increased, so the active power contribution of the alternator has increased significantly from PG1 to PG2. 
if we will further increase the governance set point then we have discussed that the power con contribution that is active power contribution by the alternator has further increased from pg2 to pg3 fine so for these three conditions if we will plot e1 e1 is the emf corresponding to pg1 so this is pg1 so as we have discussed that pg is proportional to e sin delta and e is constant so the locus of this e will be along the circle having its radius as magnitude e like this fine so for any loading condition the magnitude e that is radius of the circle will be fixed because of this fine and pg will be proportional to e sin delta and e sin delta is the vertical projection of this e for all the three conditions so let us take the condition 1 just after synchronization when the power supplied was pg1 fine so in this case we can see that the armature current is very small very small so that v plus j this i a1 x s gives e as this one for case 2 that is when governor set point is increased so that the active power supplied by the alternator has increased from pg1 to pg2 the armature current has increased from i a1 to i a2 this one for this case emf phasor e2 is v plus j i a2 xs we have ignored armature resistance i r a i a r a drop as we have ignored r a fine so that the vertical projection of e2 is proportional to pg2 similarly the third case when the governor set point is increased further when the power contribution by the alternator is pg3 which is nothing but the vertical projection of this e3 that is e3 sin delta 3 where delta 3 is the power angle corresponding to the power contribution pg3 fine one more point we can observe from this diagram that as governor set point increases that is mechanical input to the alternator increases the power factor angle that is angle between armature current and terminal voltage v also increases that is power factor decreases in this case this case means here we can easily observe that the angle between emf excitation emf e and terminal voltage v that is delta is positive fine and the armature currents are leading that is this is the scenario when the system is operating at leading power factor hence consuming the reactive power though the alternator is supplying active power but it is consuming reactive power in this case as it is operating at leading power factor so we can conclude that in this case as load to the alternator increases that is the power contribution of the alternator increases by increasing mechanical input the power factor angle also increases that is power factor decreases now what if we want our alternator to supply reactive power instead of consuming it we can adjust the field current so by adjusting adjusting field current the alternator reactive power output may be changed that is it will start supplying instead of consuming it by adjusting the field excitation so suppose we have adjusted field excitation excitation so that now it starts supplying reactive power instead of consuming it then if we will plot further you will observe that that the power factor will increase instead of decreasing 